Today, I'm going to present on uh, AI ethics education towards a policy framework. I'd like to start the presentation with uh, three cases. Uh, the three cases all concern AI and some kind of ethical challenges they have posed on us. The first case uh, comes from the United Kingdom. In 2022, when the pandemic was uh, spreading all over the world and threatening human lives, the UK government Ministry of Education had to make a very difficult decision. This decision was to not hold the regular university entry exams uh, in a face-to-face -face manner because these kind of large-scale exams where um, many uh, students sit together and take the exams might expose them to the virus and threaten their lives. So uh, the UK Ministry of Education decided that they are going to use algorithm or AI to predict the entry exam results for the individual students. So uh, an AI was picked over the so-called human prediction for a number of reasons. For instance, uh, human teachers, um, they may end up with a great inflation. Uh, they have uh, good relationships with, the, with their students, so they may tend to overestimate their students' performances. Uh, second, uh, there are uh, great varieties across different teachers and schools when it comes to the uh, preciseness of their predictions. So for these uh, considerations, uh, the UK government actually made a careful decision to use AI to predict uh, students' grades. This AI is actually a complex, right? It's not a simple calculation formula. This complex takes into consideration lots of lots of factors, including both the individual students' past performances in various exams and classes, as well as where the students come from, the schools a students study in. However, these uh, algorithm or AI predicted grades uh, soon after its announcement has uh, angered the public. Uh, here is a picture showing that the parents and the students took to the streets to protest against these grades. Uh, they thought that these grades or the, these AI predicted grades have significant ethical problems. Uh, one of the problems was that um, the algorithm would actually took uh, the schools uh, the students come from into the calculation. So uh, those schools in history that have performed well uh, or better than other schools, the students' uh, performances uh, from these uh, schools will also be uh, overestimated. But, or in other words, uh, students, an uh, excellent student who comes from a social school, uh, their performances in the exams might be underestimated. So uh, when parents and, and students know about this, uh, they are angry at uh, uh, the AI so-called violating the fairness uh, ethics uh, principle. So uh, due to the very loud public outcry, um, the UK government had to stop these AI predicted grades only two days after its announcement. So that's the case from UK. Now uh, let's turn our attention to the United States. Uh, actually in the US, uh, as early as in 2014, AI has already uh, made uh, some kind of uh, challenges to uh, ethical uh, considerations. So this time, uh, this challenge uh, came from Amazon. So Amazon is a company known for its algorithm and AI uh, predicting and recommending uh, products to uh, customers, right? So uh, if you have used Amazon before, Amazon uh, is well known for asking uh, all customers to give a ranking or a rating uh, for their products. So uh, from one to five star, uh, the customer will be asked to rate the product. And other cu uh, customers by looking at these rankings would have a quick understanding about the product's quality, so on and so forth. So Amazon thought maybe we could use the same one to five rating to rate our job candidates. So how can we know that this candidate will do well 
in my company in the future? Why not we make a prediction at the moment when the candidate has already uh, applied to the jobs uh, in the company? So Amazon launched this uh, company employment AI um, and uh, used it for almost a year. Um, so uh, from 2014 uh, to 2015, after a year, uh, the company realized that this AI has a problem. The problem is that the AI was not really reading candidates uh, in a gender neutral way, especially for those jobs that are related to software development and technical posts. So what's the reason behind this? What has gone wrong? They look into the AI and realize that uh, the AI has relied on data, decades of data, uh, from the company's uh, human resources department um, to make the predictions, to make the evaluations. Uh, so if you look at uh, the data that has been fed into this particular piece of AI was because all the data seemed to be biased towards uh, male candidates. Uh, well, uh, Amazon is not alone in this. We, it's known that Silicon Valley has uh, this history of uh, hiring more male uh, developers or male programmers than female programmers. Due to this um, imbalance in the data, the algorithm will just generate predictions based on the simple fact that uh, there are more males than females in the industry. So the AI had to, to be abandoned uh, by the company because uh, it violated the diversity uh, principle uh, of ethical uh, consideration. Okay, uh, now uh, the third case will draw our attention uh, from the UK and the US to another country that has led the de development of AI technology. That's basically China. In 2020, uh, there was a news article uh, circulating on the internet and making waves. The article was titled, Delivery Riders Trapped in the Algorithm. So this article, has received millions of views and uh, basically uh, ignited a very hot debate regarding algorithms used on delivery platforms. So the article uh, exposed that delivery time given to the riders working for the delivery platforms became shorter and shorter over years. Uh, for instance, Meituan, one of the leading delivery platforms in China, they reduced the delivery time twice during 2016 and 2019. So the required delivery time for a three kilometer distance was cut from one hour to uh, 45 minutes, then to 38 minutes. So in order to reach destinations with this shorter and shorter time limit, delivery riders really had to just race their vehicles. They had to violate traffic rules and sometimes they risk their own and others uh, road safety. Um, as a result of this uh, hot public discussion, um, the delivery platforms actually have eventually uh, changed the delivery uh, algorithm to uh, protect the safety and the security of the riders. All right, so the three examples coming from different parts of the world all have illustrated uh, the possibility or the reality of AI violating ethical principles. So I look at this UNESCO report recommending on AI ethics, we can see that at least half of these principles have been violated in the three cases. In all three cases, AI has done some kind of harm to humans, right? Uh, in the delivery uh, platform example, uh, both the riders and the passengers on the roads, uh, life safety has been threatened by the platform AI. Um, in the um, university entry exam uh, example, fairness has been uh, violated. Uh, and in the uh, hiring uh, AI example, uh, the female job candidates have been discriminated against. Right to privacy of personal data has been violated as well. In the university exam AI example, um, students past the exam records have been shared to the algorithm developer. So uh, they don't think that's necessarily ethical. Uh, last but not least, um, there are multiple stakeholders involved in AI practices. However, in many of these uh, 
decision making, multiple stakeholders uh, such as riders, such as uh, parents and students are not really incorporated or included in the decision making. Uh, it has become uh, obvious now that AI ethics education is not to just uh, educate the technology, it's to educate the humans around the technology. We have to educate humans who develop, deploy, maintain, and use AI to be aware of these ethical challenges. Um, if you look at our current AI ethics practices by education practices, we will realize that uh, it's still not adequate. According a, uh, to a UNESCO report on K-12 AI curricula, uh, there was only 24% of the AI curricula content uh, that has been spent on ethics and social impact. The majority of the AI curricular content still hasn't uh, emphasized the, the ethical principles. One of the challenges of teaching AI ethics is that ethics is not just about what is good. Ethics is about how to do things. So that it's an education of practices. Having uh, some kind of recommendations like this are helpful, However, it's still far from teaching people how to actually practice these principles. Uh, in order to um, make uh, AI ethics education work, we have to make it an education of practices. So uh, I had a, a first thought about um, now, uh, whose practices are we talking about? Um, in most of uh, the uh, existing efforts, uh, we think that uh, AI designers or AI developers, developers have to be educated to be ethical. That's pretty much true, right? Designers, especially the organizations behind them are really uh, needed for ethical education. For example, uh, Google last year has made two news headlines uh, because uh, they have been uh, marginalizing some of the AI researchers who advocate for ethical practices in AI development. So these designers, uh, and especially the organizations hiring them need to be uh, made or educated to be ethical. Other than um, designers and the organizations behind them, uh, we know that uh, for all industries, there is uh, some kind of a professional body uh, or industry alliance among different organizations. Uh, in manufacturing uh, industry, such as automobile, uh, the professional or industry uh, bodies will set up the standards for manufacturing cars. So professional associations and industry alliances are also prominent practices, practitioners in this field. Um, well, um, these uh, professional bodies, they can come up with materials and rules that educate their members to be ethical. For instance, IEEE um, actually uh, launched a global initiative uh, ethics of auto, uh, autonomous and intelligent systems. So these uh, kind of standards will have to be worked into the products of AI. These organizations, AI companies, AI corporates uh, produce. Um, well, uh, the, our first example about the UK exam uh, AI uh, also made it clear that policymakers and regulators especially those who work for the governments are very important practitioners in the domain of AI as well. So uh, for instance, a general data protection regulation is a EU-wide um, policy and the policy could be used to educate uh, practitioners to be um, ethical. However, whether this piece of policy is enough for AI ethics, um, it still remains a question mark. And policymakers and regulators need to uh, basically uh, upskill their own knowledge and literacy about AI in order to come up with effective policies. Um, lastly, right, uh, when it comes to AI, um, users and their communities are also very important. For instance, uh, social media. Uh, many, many uh, social media users are not using social media in an ethical ways especially uh, the prominent users of social media, influencers. There are many influencers who are using social media to promote products and services to their followers. But we know that some of these influencers 
are not marketing in an ethical way. For instance, they will take money from one brand or company, and they will issue a write about uh, untruthful uh, things about their competitors to say their uh, competitors' products are not good. So these uh, users and communities need also to be educated to be ethical when it comes to using AI. All right. So uh, after reflecting on whose practices we need to educate, uh, I realized that uh, it's a society-wide education effort. It has to be an education that covers almost everybody in the society in order for us to fully uh, realize uh, the importance of ethical AI. So uh, I look at uh, some of the policies uh, adopted by different countries and find that there are three different policy approaches when it comes to AI education or AI ethics education. The first approach is the independent approach. So basically the countries would have standalone policies and strategies uh, to help uh, educate AI ethics. For instance, there might be a national tech ethics education plan. Uh, there might be an independent agencies dedicated to develop and implement it, uh, the solutions uh, related to AI ethics uh, education. The second approach uh, is called the integrated approach. So um, the countries would integrate AI ethics education with existing education uh, policies or ICT uh, policies. For instance, uh, they could um, make AI, AI ethics education a component of their tech education programs, or they could make it part of their IT initiatives, such as a smart nation in the Singapore. Uh, the third approach is a thematic approach. So this a thematic approach focuses on one specific topic and domain related to AI ethics education. Well, the, the topics can actually be uh, organized in two different ways. The topics first that can be organized as specific application domains, um, such as finance AI, such as healthcare AI. Another way to categorize these themes is uh, based on ethical concerns. So uh, this ethical concern on data privacy, for instance, uh, could be one of the themes. All right. Um, I have to say that um, if you look at any individual country, um, it's more likely that the country will use multiple approaches at the same time. Uh, it's almost um, doesn't exist, non-existent uh, to find one country that only uses one of the approaches. The more the solutions, the better, right? So I'm going to now use the Singapore case to illustrate how all these approaches are taken and imp implemented. So first, the independent uh, approach. Uh, in Singapore, there are existing uh, government agencies, right? Then the agencies would uh, establish independent bodies, governance bodies to uh, educate AI ethics. National Research Council uh, in Singapore actually builds an institute called AI Singapore. The institute is meant for building human capacity and preparing for labor market transitions in view of artificial intelligence. So under AI Singapore, there is an education program for everyone uh, in the country. Uh, there is uh, an AI for kids course, an AI for everyone course, and AI for professional course. These online courses have multiple components and oftentimes one or two of the components will be dedicated to uh, AI ethics education. That's uh, one uh, initiative. Another independent body comes from Infocom Media Development Authority. So IMDA built a statutory board called the, Ad, uh, the Advisory Council on the Ethical Use of AI and Data. This council is supposed to engage stakeholders to develop ethics standards, to publish all kinds of practical uh, guides and the code of practices, um, but their target audience is still primarily the industry players. They are trying to educate the industry players to be ethical. Second approach, the thematic uh, approach can also be found in Singapore as well. So um, you see 
all kinds of uh, authorities in specific industrial domain uh, issue efforts and guidelines on ethical AI practices. Ministry of Health, for instance, uh, working along with uh, several other health domain authorities issued an artificial intelligence in healthcare guidelines. So in these guidelines, you will find uh, some uh, portions regarding ethical uh, usage or ethical developments of healthcare AI. Uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore is another uh, authority that specifies uh, in the finance domain. They actually issued a, a document called Principles to Promote Fairness, Ethics, Accountability, and Transparency uh, in the Use of AI and the Data Analytics in Financial Sector. Land Transport Authority uh, issues a road traffic autonomous motor vehicles rules uh, in 2017. So in this uh, rules uh, document, you could also find some uh, discussions on ethical development of auto or uh, driverless uh, cars uh, development. So these uh, domains are uh, categorized based on the specific applications of AI in certain industries. Another way to uh, look at thematic um, approach is to look at the ethical concerns, right? So Personal Data Protection Commission has been there for quite a while. It's not uh, just developed for AI. It's uh, uh, set up pre-AI uh, era. Uh, well, uh, PDPC, uh, in view of uh, the development of AI, issued uh, also a guide, implementation and self-assessment guide for organizations. This guide wants to make sure that these uh, organizations will align with uh, data pr uh, pr protect protection uh, guidelines issued by the government. Uh, they also had this uh, minimum viable product. It's basically a, a tool that will uh, allow industry to achieve greater transparency around AI systems. So as you can see, PDPC also targets the industry of formal organizations more when it comes to uh, educating uh, them to be more ethical. There are non-government-led efforts that are more open to the bigger society. So Singapore Computer S Society is a professional body, a professional association among computer professionals. So uh, the society launched a website that includes a body of knowledge regarding AI ethics and governance. The, website is accessible to the public. Other than a Singapore Computer Societies, uh, local universities also have launched certificate programs in order to help the public to learn about AI ethics. Uh, here we have an example from the Singapore Management University. All right, uh, I have talked about both the independent and the thematic approach. And how about the integrated approach? I have to say that I'm yet to find integrative approach being adopted um, by the Singapore uh, system. Well, uh, but it doesn't mean that the integrative approach doesn't exist. The UNESCO report on AI curriculum actually shows that many, many countries have already adopted AI education or AI ethics education into their existing curricula. So, uh, countries may uh, integrate AI ethics education as either required or elective subjects. Most of the time, uh, these uh, AI education components will be um, grouped under the existing ICT or IT subjects. Uh, in uh, some rare cases, um, these uh, AI education components will also be included under interdisciplinary or cross-curricular subjects, or even extra-curricular activities. Um, well, however, um, even by looking at the entire world, I'm yet to see um, AI ethics education to be integrated into civic education curricula. As we know, um, almost every country has its own civic education program. In case of Singapore, um, this civic education program is called Character and Citizenship Education. 
CCE was implemented in 2014 and revised recently in 2021. The goal of CCE is to inculcate values and build competencies in our students to develop them to be good individuals and useful citizens. And the core values under CCE include respect, responsibility, resilience, integrity, care, and harmony. The CCE realized that the emerging trends and the global developments would have uh, a lot of impacts on this program. Uh, among these uh, trends and uh, developments, uh, technological advancement are actually one a prominent category. Uh, when I look at uh, civic education or CCE in Singapore, I realize that a lot of the principles and values actually align with AI ethics education. Um, the goals are both to um, somehow cultivate values into uh, uh, our students in order to help them to practice in the future. Therefore, I want to end my presentation today with maybe an invitation or a question for comments from our audiences. Uh, do you think we could integrate AI ethics education into civic education programs and curricula in each of the countries? And if we do so, how are we going to do it? How can we build a curriculum that's practical enough so students can actually use them in their everyday practices? Thank you for listening and I'm uh, really uh, look forward to hearing from you about your views as well.